Hello and welcome back everyone. A happy new year yet again to you. And we have the one and only Derek Williams back after a great uh, reception of our most recent video where Derek has taken us through some teachings on Louisa Picaretta and the Divine Will. And today we are joined for the first time in 2024 by Derek. And I just wish to say a happy new year, Derek. Thank you for joining us again. What are you treating to us? What are you treating us with today? Happy New Year, Mark. Delight to be here. So today I want to look at the actual title of Louisa's 36 volumes on the Divine Will. Sounds good. Sounds a lot. <laughs> uh, that, uh, <laughs> actually, Jesus, in his wisdom, gave us a very long title. You know, most authors will give you like some some books have got a one word title. Some have got a two or three word title. I think there's going to be the bordering on 15 to 20 words in this title. I haven't counted them yet, but <laughs> it's a long title and um, it tells us a lot about what the divine one is about. Excellent. Well, I'm more than happy to let you begin off, and if any questions pop up, I'm sure we'll get some time in for it. And of course, I say to everyone watching the video, get your questions in on the comments, add something more to it. We are reading them, we are responding to them, and uh, let's take it from there. So how about we begin with a short prayer then, Derek, are you all right to do that? Absolutely. We'll begin with something of a prevenient act. So in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, you want to speak and to listen. So we will speak and listen with you. Come divine will, come speak in our speaking. Listen in our listening. Breathe in our breathing. Think in our thinking. Beat in our heartbeat. Flow in our blood. And we'll refuse this time into your will, this moment, Every word, every breath, every heartbeat, every act we do, we refuse into your will for the glory of the Father and the fiat voluntas to us. Our Lady, Queen of the Divine Will, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Servant to God, Louisa Picaretta, pray for us. And Saint Annabel de Francia, pray for us. Name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And also, Lord, we ask you to send your angels to us. And not just to us, but send your angels to our friends, our family, our enemies. Send your angels to minister to them, Lord, and to bring them into this kingdom in this time that we're going through where things are accelerating so fast. We ask you to send your angels out because in the book of Revelation, it shows that your angels go out to the four corners of the world and bring in the harvest. So we ask you, Lord, to send your angels to us like you did at um, with Peter and Cornelius. The angel went to Cornelius and he said, call, call on Peter and tell Peter to come and preach the gospel. So I ask you, Lord, to send your angels out to Peter, to, to people, to bring angelic visitations in this time so that they will want to hear what we've got to teach them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. So here we go. I've got in front of me, listeners, readers, watchers, etc. The topic of the book. So I've opened up my thick volume on the topic. Now, every this has got all 36 volumes in it. And every time you open up another volume, it's got exactly the same page presented. Mark, you've probably got the same book, right? Yes, I've got it. That's here. the one. Right. Praise Jesus. So it's on the front. But it's also inside on every time a new volume starts, that that title appears. And if you've even got, if you're out there in, in YouTube world, if you folks have even got the individual volumes, <clears throat> it should be the same. You should have the name, the same type title on every book you've got. OK, and this is a topic that Jesus gave the, the books this topic, not Louisa. These were just Louisa's diaries. She was just writing diaries um, in journals um, and Jesus gives her this, this title. The Kingdom of the Divine Will in the Midst of Creatures, Book of Heaven, The Call to the Creature, to the Order, to the Place, 
and to the purpose for which they were created by God. Now, if I take the last line and spin it around, because one of the things Jesus talks about is how humanity has had no order, no place and no purpose because we've been out of the kingdom. We were created for this kingdom. What we do with our fusing, with our acts, with reading Louisa's volumes, with our abandonment to the divine will, with our resignation to the divine will, with, the, uh, with, with doing the rounds and the eyes of the passion, what we are doing is we are returning to that for which we were created. Okay. Really understand this. We were created for this. And the great happiness of the creature will come when the creature has taken possession of this kingdom. This constitutes our great happiness. Okay. And um, let's take a look at the opposite. We see people chasing after alcohol, sex, celebrity status, fame, fortune, wealth, um, popularity. We see people chasing these things. And we know that those people who take hold of these things are desperately unhappy. You read about the celebrity who is also the alcoholic and the drug addict. The suicides that take place in this particular celebrity pop star world. People who die young. So many celebrities have died young in the last 12 months, sometimes from a drug overdose, sometimes in mysterious unpublished circumstances. They are not happy. Okay. And yet, uh, the, the, the programs that are on TV to help people get into this lifestyle are watched by millions and millions of people. The true happiness is to be found in this, the call to the creature, to the, let's just say one line, one, one word, the purpose for which they were created by God, the purpose. What is my purpose? Why was I created? You know, if you're talking to somebody who is not into any of this and they'll be saying, why, what, what's my purpose? What have I evolved for? Because that's the language, right? But then you start talking to them about, no, you were created by a living God who loves you and who has great designs upon you for your happiness. He wants you to be happy. He is eternally, infinitely happy. He has no, in him, he has no sin and no sadness, no depression, none of, no anxieties, no fears, no worries. He is perfectly and infinitely happy. And he desires passionately for you to fully share in his happiness. His draw is calling you into it. And uh, I had a scripture given me before Christmas. Um, and it was to do with the parable of the wedding feast or something. And the actual line, no, no, it was the parable of the um, the two the two or three stewards who were given ten talents, five talents, and one talent, something like that. The people with the ten and the five, they had done the work and they returned money back, the return talents back to the master. And the master, the master does not give them anything more he says come and share in your master's joy yeah come and share in your master's joy this is what jesus wants us he wants us to share in his joy in his happiness and in john chapter chapter the gospel of john thinking about chapter 14 or 15 jesus says this to his disciples us my joy will be in you and your joy will be complete. Only God can do this. Have you ever stood in front of somebody who is absolutely overflowing with joy? They're full of joy. They're laughing. They're smiling. They're happy. And just stood there feeling utterly disengaged <laughs> from their joy. Because no one can share their joy with you. You might have an empathy for it. You might think, oh, people often say, I wish I had your joy. We cannot. 
It's not possible. We're limited. Our humanity is limited. We can only share in God's joy because we were created to, to have God's joy. So God wants us to have his joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. One of the ways of experiencing that joy is through the book of heaven, because this is where God is calling us to the purpose, the purpose of our creation. One of the purposes of our creation was to be happy. That was God did not create us to be depressed, anxious, fearful, worried, sick. He did not create us for any of that. None of that was meant before the fall. He created us to be happy in his presence, living according to his will. That's where the happiness is to be found. So let's go back to the title. I'm going to keep on going back to the title. The kingdom of the divine will in the midst of creatures. Okay, the kingdom of the divine will in the midst of creatures, in our midst, right? That kingdom is interior. It's within us. It's established within us. And in my studies of the Divine Will Diaries, um, I found, and these are the words of Jesus, I could actually take you to these words, possibly, <laughs> possibly. I'm just starting volume 26. I've been on volume 25 for quite a while. I've done a long meditation on volume 25, and I'm thinking of going back to it because Jesus talks about the the purpose of the volumes okay he talks about what louisa has received with the first volumes and um the the purpose of the first 24 the first 24 volumes and he talks about here we go this is uh, volume 25 october the 10th 1928 don't forget louisa has only written 24 volumes so he's writing, he's talking to her about the first 24 volumes. You must know that everything I have manifested to your soul, the graces I have given you, the many truths you have written on my divine will, 24 volumes, your pains and everything you have done has been nothing but a gathering of the materials in order to build. So volumes 1 to 24, the hours of the passion, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Kingdom of the Divine Will. These are the materials with which we're going to build an interior kingdom of the Divine Will. He then says this, Now it is necessary to order them and to get everything settled. And then he concludes the paragraph, Therefore our sacrifice and work is not finished, we must go forward until the work is accomplished. Okay, go forward. So you think to yourself, great, Jesus has given Louise in volumes 1 to 24 all the materials. Think about building a kingdom. The tarmac, the stones, the pipework, the electricity, the brickwork, the concrete, the cement, the, um, the, the trees and the bushes for the beautiful parks and so on. Everything needed for the buildings and so on. That's that's your building a kingdom, right? Uh, Jesus has given her all those materials. And then he says, now we must go and build. And what is the first step Jesus takes when he's going to build the kingdom? The very first step. This is what Teresa writes next. Then as I am near my Jesus in the sacrament, every morning there is benediction with the Holy One. That's the very next sentence. Now, I'm going to say a thing that I say as a Catholic, because I'm a Catholic evangelist, and I'm not into this idea that, you know, oh, we, we don't really need to bring people into the Catholic Church. Now, as long as they become a Christian. Well, I love the fact that people make a commitment to Christ, but I want Catholics. OK, and for me, this is available in the Catholic Church, the Eucharist. OK, the Eucharist. Yes, over in the Orthodox Church, the, we recognize the, the, the Orthodox have got it. But I want to make people Catholics. And I say, if you want to get into the divine will, get into the Catholic Church, get into the Eucharist. Get into benediction, because the very next step on building the kingdom 
is the benediction. And Jesus says this, while I was praying, my sweet Jesus to bless me, moving in my interior, told me. So this is Jesus building the kingdom with Louise. This is Jesus using the materials. My daughter, I bless you with my whole heart. So don't forget, benediction is blessing. That's what it is. I bless you with my whole heart. Even more, I bless my very will in you. I bless your thoughts, breaths, and heartbeats that you may think always about my will. May God bless you the same way. May you only think about his will. Um, the, let me listen. May breathe it continuously, and my will alone may be your heartbeat. And for love of you, I bless all human wills. So here, October 1928, that's um, 2024, 96 years ago, <laughs> 96 years ago, Jesus blessed your human will 96 years ago. How long cool is that, Mark? I was born. <laughs> yeah, long time. Mark, do you want to chuck anything in at this point, or are you happy still listening? Yeah, it's just little things popping up about the joy that you mentioned and other things. I don't have any riveting questions just now. I think I'm enjoying taking it all in. Great. Well, keep taking it in. All right. So Jesus says this to Louisa. I bless all human wills that they may dispose themselves to receive the life of my eternal volition. So Jesus has already blessed us to receive this okay if you were to read ephesians chapter one it's around verse three um the god of father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us in christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places okay now often and i'm from the charismatic background and i love the charismatic background but some things drive me nuts um for example when people are coming to you after when you're at an event and they're saying, oh, please, please, Dave, will you pray a blessing upon me? And I'm thinking to myself, but God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings. Just stand in the blessing. Be in the blessing. Just be in it. Now, you children of the divine will. It, when you give God your fiat and God is establishing the kingdom of the divine will in your soul, you have got a super abundance of a super abundance of blessings that are building up in you, like the Icelandic volcanoes, you know, it's it's building up to overflow, to burst out. Um, and all we have to learn to do is recognize recognize that god has blessed us he has blessed us he says here i bless all human wills he has blessed every human will so that every human will can be disposed to receive the fullness of the life of the divine will so your human will has been blessed by jesus in october 1928 and that blessing was to enable you in 2024 to be disposed towards um, the life of the eternal volition. Okay, so Jesus has done all the work. Now, what he's saying to you is, look, just learn to receive everything I've already given you. Learn to receive it. And what are we receiving? Let's take a look. Back to the title. The kingdom of the divine within the midst of creatures. So you are learning to receive the fullness of a kingdom. The first 24 volumes, as I've already said, they are the materials. You are going to the divine B and Q, and you are gathering in the wood, the pipes, the tools, the electrics, the lights, the windows. You're gathering in all the material in volumes one to 24, to build. Now that's common sense, right? Common sense. If you're going to do any building work, you got to gather materials and you need to gather. You can't just say, let's just get the bricks because we can just build first and we're okay. 
Anyone who builds, you know, you know, you've got to first lay the foundations with concrete and then you can start to build bricks. But no sooner have you got a line of bricks built, then you suddenly realize, oh, hold on a minute. I need to put some cables in here and then I need to prepare to put the windows here and then I need to prepare for the doorway here. So straight away, and the insulation. So straight away, you know that mm. you can't just use bricks and cement. You've got to use everything. You can't oh. just build just bricks. OK, so you've got to build everything. So in the diaries, Jesus is talking about virtue. Then he's talking about his divine will. Then he's talking about doing the rounds. Then he's talking about abandonment to the divine will, resignation to the divine will, back onto virtues. So he's he's bringing in all the materials in volumes 1 to 24. Then you get to 25 and suddenly he says, right, now we're going to build. Now the kingdom is going to be built in your soul, volumes 25 onwards. And the first thing he tells you is, I have blessed your will so that you can receive this divine life. I have blessed it. And I think this is important, Mark, because so many people out there are battling with insecurities. And in my conversations with people, they're saying something like, you know, I'm not worthy of this gift. I'm never going to grow in this gift. How am I going to attain to the fullness of this gift? And, you know, I'm such a sinner and I'm so weak and I'm so insecure and fearful and worried and everything else so all these weaknesses are pouring out over the soul and they're being consumed by their underlying weaknesses and woundedness and all the time jesus is saying this is my work you just give me your fiat and i will do everything else and this is something i read in um in vol is in volume 35. I don't think I've got it. Have I got it laid out? I don't think I have. Um, somebody sent this to me before Christmas. This blew me away. Um, let me just see if I've got it. I'm open on. I'm going to quote it off the top of my head because uh, an Italian friend of mine sent me a, an excerpt from volume 35. And the excerpt was. That if we focus upon our weaknesses, the weaknesses will gain strength. If we focus upon, for example, the divine will writings, if we focus upon acts, rounds, etc., the weaknesses will vanish like the mist. And I think that's one of the reasons why Jesus calls us to meditate upon his passion, because when we're meditating upon his passion, we're looking outside of ourselves at another and we're placing love in the other and it gets us off ourselves and onto another and the weaknesses can disappear and the divine will can grow so this is one of the ways we can build the kingdom of the divine will okay mark i'm blitzing you with information <laughs> do you have any thoughts you want to chip in yeah, maybe going from the most present backwards then while it's fresh on my mind. But that's the idea of uh, focusing on self and, you know, the negativity which brings about depression, which brings about anxiety and so forth. It's all trapped in self and it's the strength of the darkness, the dark side, the evil, whatever. It's all focused on the bad, the complete opposite of joy that you explained the Father wants to give us. And it's, it comes across quite judgmental when I first heard it and then and everything else because see when we're focused on self and that's these are the products of selfishness. It's a, well, that's a bit judgmental if it's depression or anxiety. Of course, it's all about being there for people. I've had my own bouts of anxiety in the past and my downwards and depression and whatever. I've been good for quite some time. Thanks be to God, literally. But um, so I can relate to that. But I know what it's like when you just stay trapped in the triggers, the sources that made it go that way. And I remember studying philosophy over in the seminary at the, the university. Even Aristotle went through logically about it all to the point of where everything selfishness. And where do all these things point to as well that you mentioned at the beginning? Eventually, they can lead down a bad road to suicide. Yeah. Um, now let's just take upon let's just take upon this judgmental thing, Mark, because this is a very important point. You see, <clears throat> when we're talking about 
and not focusing on oneself. And even though we're, we can get wrapped up in depression, I, I've suffered depression many, many times, recent times as well, where you just get in this cloud and in this pit and it seems like there's no escape, right? Um, so we have empathy for that and we want to bring healing to that. So let's just imagine we're in the hospital and we've got the person there in the hospital bed and let's just say depression is a physical problem like a broken bone or something and as the consultant comes in and he's probing the body and he's looking for where the problem is and he finds the problem and the person screams and he finds the problem because he's pushing against it right but the consultant is not there just to say oh you poor thing okay you just stay there a while and we'll be right back he's there to cure and he wants to reveal the problem and then present the cure. And he's saying to the patient, OK, you're suffering from depression. Here is a cure. Here is medicine. And the divine will brings us a medicine for such things. For example, one of the fruits of depression is despair, which leads to suicide. Yeah. The cure for despair. Jesus talks about this when he talks about the act of resignation to the divine will. And he and Louisa went to visit a soul by location um, who was gonna who was suicidal and suffering from despair. And Jesus teaches Louisa, he says, an act of perfect resignation to the divine will brings peace. It is medicine and it will cure the despair. And he and Louisa were speaking to the soul. I think in fact, in fact I think it was Louisa. This is from my memory, so. I may have got it wrong in terms of the exact thing, but this is what was going on. And the person started doing acts of resignation. And it says, gradually, the soul became peaceful. Now, I've got a personal experience of this. When I was in Italy a couple of months ago, I had a really, really bad night. My last night in Italy was horrible, absolutely horrible. I woke up at around two o'clock in the morning. And I was absolutely overwhelmed with despair, which is nothing unusual. I can I have to battle despair a lot because of stuff that's happened in my life. Um, and I woke up completely despairing and I was pleading with Jesus. I think I was pleading with him. I don't know the time limits, probably half an hour or so. I was sweating in my bed, pleading with Jesus to save my soul. And I felt after a while, I, I, initially I felt nothing. I just felt I was on the edge of hell. I really felt that it was a horrible, powerful experience. And then after a while of pleading with Jesus to save my soul, I felt the presence of Jesus and Louisa very subtly initially, but it became more and more powerful. And then I started doing acts of resignation. And I just said, okay, Jesus, I resign myself to your divine will. I resign myself to your divine will. And I kept on repeating it. Now, initially nothing happened. And still despair was raging. But gradually, as I kept on repeating it, I resigned myself to your will. I resigned myself to your will. I resigned myself to your will. After a few minutes, I started to feel um, peace coming in, in a, in a way like when you're going to drink something, you know, and you feel the cold water going down you in the morning. Yeah. And it's like one after another. Peace, peace, peace peace and then eventually that peace started to wrap me up until after about an hour or so of pleading with Jesus and doing acts of resignation everything became calm the despair left completely and I lay down with gratitude to Jesus and Jesus says this is important in the divine world writings and in the other writings he says gratitude is so important the soul that is gratitude for the graces I've given I will give even more graces mm. so gratitude so I lay down full of gratitude to Jesus now that's where I had the, the I had the sickness of despair and Jesus offered me the medicine and I had the choice do I stay in the despair or do I take the medicine? Exactly. And I would say on this topic, you can call that the power of the will, the power of the mind. And and we have the power to go the despair road because we're feeling overwhelmed, whatever's caused it and everything else. We keep going down that way, that pathway. 
we're feeding it and feeding it and feeding it with mm. pushing up here. But then it, do what you do, who's like submitting, re resignating, resigning mm. to the will of the Lord. Um, it reminds me of a story I heard years ago. Same principle, I suppose, although different. It was an old saying of an old, like, uh, a Native American Indian idea, as we called them back in the time with the movies and all that. And um, the the young boy was asking the chief, you know, how how do you get the peace or the evil? What do you do? And the way he described it was like two wolves inside him. One was the good wolf, one was the bad wolf. And well, how do you make the good wolf win? Well, you feed the good wolf and you starve the bad wolf. Yeah, I know that narrative well. <laughs> what is, uh, well, who, what are you feeding? Are you feeding the despair or are you feeding the joy? Are you feeding this distorted will? Are you submitting to the will of God who wants to bless your will, who has blessed your will? Where are you looking? You know, and it's like that Lord of the Rings, I go back to that. That's just how I understand things to begin with. When I hear it, I can relate to things that just flash mm. up in memory. But remember Gandalf goes to the king who's a despair and looking terrible and he's got the bad guy whispering in his ear all the time and Gandalf has to set him free. And mm, then yeah. charging the battle at the end, you know, a brand <laughs> new king. That is the change that God wants to make in us. And the other thing you were mentioning about that joy when we're in that state, when God has set us free and given us every spiritual blessing in mm. Ephesians 1, Remember Brother Sun Sister Moon when St. Francis got it? He's mm -hmm. thrown out all the materials because his dad had a bit of money and he was wealthy and he was throwing everything out for all the poor. The father comes up in a rage and St. Francis goes, I just want to share my joy with you. <laughs> 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 I get it. Because I've yeah, experienced yeah. it as well. You know, yeah, yeah. It. And it is that transforming power of the love of God. And... Yeah. um. I mean, it shows you, though, the depth of the where it can go, and we will be taken there bit by bit, just as Louisa was by the Lord himself. It's one we thing, will. A, a blink mm -hmm. of an eye for a powerful God just to change and transform you, but where's the substance in that? Where, where's the beauty in just having it done for you? Mm. It's the fact that we'll come and experience, come and partake in the nature of the divine will. Don't just expect something and then it's done. Again, where's the gratitude? But mm -hmm. to understand and learn at the same time, going to that more fulfillment place with what the Lord's inviting us to and what he wants us to trust in him with, that to me is the whole essence of life, of being. And um, I'm sure I remember the catechism, heaven's not a state of a predestination or a destination we're reaching. It's a state of being. Mm -hmm. Everything correlates, you can see it. Let's build on this, what you just said. Um, you just said <coughs> that this is uh, something of a process. It takes time, yeah? And I want to speak to the people who are watching this at the moment. Think of, forget your current circumstances and so on, because most people won't actually do this. This is done by very few people. But think of the excitement of being able to build your own house. Imagine you've got all the gifts, all the talents, all the material. Just imagine it for me. Just use your imagination and think, yeah, I can. I know how to cement. I know how to wire. I know how to plumb and so on. And I've got someone working with me. There's a team of us. There's a fellowship. And we're going to build the ideal home, say, out in the country somewhere, you know, like the pioneers did in, in, in America and people have done in this country. People have been doing this for centuries, right? And, and the excitement of doing doing that and the graft and seeing it slowly come together with your eyes you know you're seeing it with your eyes just this beautiful place slowly being built that one day you'll be able to decorate and then abide in right now when you read the book of heaven and you start to live what jesus is calling you to live you are building a kingdom within your soul. Every one of you is building a slightly different kingdom within you. And you're building it with Christ's hands. He is the, the master architect, who is the architect of architects, who is helping you to build it. He's supplying you with the materials to do it. And he's supplying you with the skills. For example, one of the ways you build 
the kingdom of the divine will. One of them is to read the volumes. So imagine that you're building a kingdom just by sitting down with a nice coppa, <laughs> a bar of Christmas chocolate, that's what <laughs> I like, and a book. And you're just reading the book just by reading it. You are building a kingdom within you. And then you put the book down and you say, okay, well, Jesus now wants to get on with the day-to-day -day activities. So I'm going to do that with Jesus. And as you're going through your day-to-day -day activities, come divine will, come write in my writing, come drink in my drinking. Mm. Whatever you're doing, you're calling on the divine will and slowly building the kingdom. That building of the kingdom, if you go to the last line, the call to the creature, the call to the creature. I spoke to my wife before Christmas um, about vocation in the church because we were looking at some of the some of the attacks upon our, our beautiful Holy Father and how he is a pastor, an evangelist, reaching out to, to the lost sheep, basically. Um, and I said to my wife, God does not call the perfect. He does not choose the perfect. He perfects the chosen. So when people come into the church, they're a mess. And they're coming in to a church full of mess. Okay, the church on earth is full of mess. Pope Francis calls it the field hospital. Because they're, they're only there because they've been called in. And this is the testimony of the, of the scriptures and the saints. You know, whenever God calls a soul, the soul immediately presents God with the reason why God should not choose them. <laughs> this is the call of Moses, who argued with him for an entire chapter in Exodus chapter 3. It's the call of Isaiah, woe to me, I'm a man of unclean lips among a people of unclean lips. It's Jeremiah, Lord, I am too young. Peter, away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. This is the testimony throughout the centuries. Even St. Francis of Assisi there, who God had to basically confine to bed for a couple of years <laughs> before he could actually start to use him. God is calling the wounded, the broken and the weak into his kingdom. So if you're there thinking, you know, I'm wounded, broken and weak, then you are qualified okay you're qualified and you you the, the 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 books these volumes are god calling out to you and in fact i've got the divine will prayer book in my house and at the beginning of it it has three appeals from god and our lady appealing to us to receive this beautiful gift and now how many of you that are watching this are looking at this volume. How many of you are looking at a page which is like this? How many? Because these were not available. You only have to turn the clock back 25 years. I didn't have this. In fact, I only got this 18 months ago. <laughs> I had the, I had the diaries in another format 18 months ago. So God has given you these volumes to build this kingdom within you and so that you can hear his call and throughout these this is jesus catechizing us on his divine will giving us catechesis on his divine will i've just opened up randomly it's totally random i just flicked the thing open and i've got a highlight on this page okay there we go and it says this, humility produces in the soul a garment of safety in such a way that wrapped in this garment of safety, the soul remains in the most profound calm, embellishing all of herself in order to please her dearest and beloved Jesus. So Jesus sees your soul. We do not. Jesus sees your soul. He sees what is happening in your soul to infinite detail. You and I, we are blind 
to what's going on in our soul for the most part for the most part okay we can have sense peace we can sense joy and love and despair and depression and sadness but for the most part we're blind and jesus says this in the prophet isaiah i will lead the blind in a way that they do not know here with the book of heaven you have jesus with his word being a lamp to our feet teaching us about the inner workings of our soul and what he is doing the with humility a garment and this is where his call his call to us produces fruit and what's his call his call is number one to order you live in a world which is descending into chaos folks don't worry about it it's going to get a heck of a lot worse <laughs> stop worrying about the sinking ship which is next door to the church the church is not sinking people often talk about the chaos in the church take it from me there is little chaos in the church there is very very little if any because god is renewing the church through the divine will okay the church is the place of peace the sanctuary the ship which the Pope is going to secure to the pillars of Jesus, of Mary and the Eucharist. The church is the place of safety, the one place you should be. The world is descending into chaos. So the church is going to get the church is going to get more and more the place of peace, and the world is going to get more and more the place of chaos. Okay. God is calling you to the order. The order. Then to the place. The place, the kingdom of the divine will. You must remember, God gave these diaries not to you and me. There is only what I think there's only one place in the book, really, where it says they've been entrusted. They've been entrusted to the Supreme Pontiff. So you have a responsibility to stay close to the Supreme Pontiff because it's him who holds these. He is the steward of these diaries, if you like. So stay close, okay? And um, that's the place, call to the place, okay? The kingdom of the divine will is found in the church. It's found in the Catholic church. So stay grounded in your faith. The devil will want to tempt you away from this ship that you are on. As he's tempted people for centuries, he will want to tempt you away. Stay on the ship. And then to the purpose. So God has given you order. He's calling you to place. And then purpose. What is the purpose? The purpose is... He wants you to have possession of the divine will. He wants you to have beatitude while on earth. He wants you to have the fullness of grace, the fullness of peace, the fullness of joy, the fullness of love and happiness. He wants you to be abounding with every good thing <coughs> that pertains to him. And I'm pointing there, okay? Because this is where we get it. We, it all comes to us through the cross. The triumph will come through the cross okay so that is the order the place and the purpose for which you were created by god that is god's plan and sometimes what we have to do is challenging because we might think to ourselves you know there's this report and there's that report about the church and about the pope there is things out there which are tempting us to move away from the very place where the kingdom is going to be established there are temptations don't pay attention. Focus upon your journey in the divine will in the Catholic Church under the Supreme Pontiff, walking with Jesus, Mary and Louisa and St. Joseph. Mark, do you have anything you want to ping in on that one? <laughs> I'm glad you clarified up about the storm and the world and there'll be more peace in the church. I think straight away people will be like, have you not been seeing the recent stuff coming up in the church? <laughs> you know, uh, confusion, 
half the world's bishops, including all the African bishops, against the same-sex couple blessing fiasco stuff, all the documentations, confusion after confusion. Um, the videos popping up now even about how is it a sign that God's unhappy with the Pope when lightning struck St. Peter's statue over in Buenos Aires on his birthday. We're seeing all this packing up just in the last couple of weeks. And uh, but then when you say you know there will be more peace in the church, let's remember the definition of the church. Because people think of the Holy See, the governing body, the Vatican, the building, the bricks and mortar, the bureaucracy. No, <laughs> we are the church, the mystical body of Christ, who Himself is the head. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, and everyone. Higher up you go as the servants, and even what's the I forget the Latin, the servant of the servants of the of God is the Pope. Um, no, we're right. Obviously, we keep praying and praying and praying because everything our ladies told us is happening with great division and all the rest of it. But we know the devil's running out of time, and when you're speaking about, like you say, they are get anchored that vessel, the church, with the Pope, and all those within the the mystical body of the church of christ is us mm -hmm. all of us of every rank and and whatever is the pillars of our lady and the eucharist which is don bosco's vision it was a dream the storm is there bashing the vessel all over but as soon as they reach the pillars of our lady and the eucharist that's when the calm came and we have to remember that like a house yeah. that cannot stand yeah so let's let's pick up on that february the 10th 1924 this is volume 16 the watchers okay i'll repeat it again volume 16 february 10 1924 so that will be a hundred years a uh, hundred years ago next month from when we're recording this okay thank you when i had that day. yeah yeah who knows so this is jesus in my all-encompassing vision, I see that these writings, right, these writings which I've been pointing out to you, these writings on my lap, will be for my church like a new sun, S-U-N, that will arise within her midst and her members, drawn by its blazing light, will seek to be transformed in this light and become spiritualized and divinized subsequently by their having renewed the church they will transform the face of the earth now what we have at the moment is we have a media that wants to pick on all the weaknesses that they see in the hierarchy especially okay that picking on it all and we have this 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 apparent fight among the decide among the apostles it's been going on for two thousand years folks why worry <laughs> jesus had it why worry about it peter arguing with paul james john the son of the thunder fighting amongst themselves deciding who was going to be the one the most powerful and who was going to sit at the right and the left in heaven come on folks breathe okay it's nothing unusual jesus has had this for two thousand years it's nothing unusual and um, if you want to see the church transformed you as a children of the divine will have been entrusted with the responsibility to do this so you can't look at anybody else to bring renewal to the church except your own growth in the divine will and i've been saying this to children of the divine will for some time i've been saying that you have been entrusted with the most powerful gift that god has ever given creatures the most powerful gift you've got the most powerful weapon You've got the gift of living in the divine will. It is incumbent on you to renew the church and transform the face of the earth. So all of these climate scientists are going to do nothing. All of these people who are trying to stop the oil, they will achieve nothing. 
No, no one else out there is going to achieve anything. The world is going to be transformed by the children of the divine will and them alone. No one else has been entrusted with that task. Jesus alone entrusts it to the children of the divine will. God alone he entrusts it to you. How do you do it? You read the volumes and you live what you're learning in the volumes and you you grow in you build that kingdom within you and you will have the power you have it already to stop wars to transform the church to protect the holy father and don't forget that protection isn't just about protecting him from a, a physical or desperate attack is to protect him from the deceits and temptations of the enemy he needs the same protection as you and i do because we're all facing the same difficulties and temptations, but for him, it's magnified massively. And so when we see the Holy Father doing something that we think, hold on a minute, what's he doing? Well, we should be praying for him, not accusing him. Yeah. Don't forget the name of the person who accuses is Satan. <laughs> when you accuse the Holy Father, you become Satan. You literally, that's the literal word. So if I say, to you, if you say to me, oh, I'm accusing him of this. And I'm saying, well, that's what, that's that occurred word accuse means I'm Satan. That's what you're literally saying. If you were to translate that word accuse, that's literally what you are saying. Now, are you going to be accusing him and taking that side? Or are you going to bless him and stand with Jesus? And this is where we get real black and white choices as to the road we're going to walk on. And it goes back to the Our Father. I know with the divine will, it's always thy will be done, you know. But remember, it also says, forgive us as we forgive those. <laughs> yeah, bang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, know. let's go back to these writings. This is uh, January the 18th, 1928. Now, what I'm reading out from here now is Father Joseph Inutzi's doctoral thesis. So this is his translation which, you know, is a fantastic translation, and it should, and it rightly so, he speaks Italian, and he's read Louise's diaries. So, volume 23, January the 18th, 1928. Now, what I manifest on my divine will, and that which you write, may be called the gospel of the kingdom of the divine will. Okay, so... This is called the book of heaven, but Jesus has also said it may be called the gospel of the kingdom of the divine will. Don't forget the church has approved this. Okay, so I'm not speaking a heresy. This is approved by the church. In nothing does it oppose either sacred scripture or the gospel contained therein that I announced on earth. So there's nothing in the kingdom of the divine will writings that will contradict what you have in your Bibles. If it looks like it contradicts, it's because we haven't studied it sufficiently. They complement each other. And that is why I allow and I call priests to come to read the gospel of the kingdom of my divine fiat that is imbued with heaven, so that I may say to them, as I said to the apostles, preach it to all the world. Remember Jesus in the book of Revelation, in the, in the Gospels, he says, this gospel of the kingdom must be proclaimed to the whole world. So what I'm reading to you must be proclaimed to the whole world before the triumph can come. So if you want the triumph to come, we got to get busy. Oh, and by the way, one more thing on the triumph. Um, and I'm going to go to, to volume 25 for this because this is, um, this is something I learned in Corato, when Louisa was in her in her bedroom, um, and she talks about the triumph uh, and how sweet and powerful. No, sorry. The sweet and powerful beads of her rosary make her victorious and triumphant again before the divinity, conquering the kingdom of the divine fiat to make it come in the midst of creatures. The rosary is going to take on a new efficaciousness in the divine will, and it will help to bring about the triumph. And I've heard people in the divine will, teachings on it, 
who say we don't need to be doing these devotions anymore. That is a deceit. Actually, Jesus says the opposite. In fact, Louisa, sorry, Louisa writes the opposite. She sees that the rosary is going to bring the kingdom of the divine will to triumph in the midst of creatures. So we need the rosary now more than ever before. You know, it's not the first time I've heard that word about the rosary for these times with more efficacious, that that effectiveness. There's something in the, the divine will of God that he's deliberately making the rosary the weapon of choice, the efficaciousness of it. I don't know where I've read or heard that recently in the past year, but that's something significant that did stand out with me. I have heard it multiple times, Mark. I'm sorry to interrupt, um, but I wanted to make an offer to your listeners. And this is where we might get a bit of dialogue going with the people tuning into this. Um, my sister-in-law put together a book called the basically The Rosary and the Divine Will. Mm. Um, and in between each Hail Mary, there is a round in the Divine Will. And then each, each decade begins and ends with prayers to the Divine Will. It's not exhaustive. There's not long prayers. They're like a couple of sentences. So if anybody wants a copy, drop us a line. We can send you a free copy on PDF or a chargeable hard copy. It's up to you. So drop us a line. Um, and we need to get the, the rosary of the Divine Will out there. It's the normal rosary. Joyful, luminous, sorrowful, glorious, but just with additional divine will prayers throughout it. Sounds good. We'll leave all that information as usual in the de description box below the video, along with your channel name from the Pistinia. And again, maybe a good point, just on a side note, remember folks, give uh, Derek the thumbs up, go over and subscribe to his channel as well. And you've got over 200 videos now, Derek, but you're still waiting to reach a thousand subs. Is that right? Yeah, they're being a bit slow, Mark. I don't know what these children of the divine will are doing. I mean, I, I encourage rest, but come on, folks. Um, so, I, you know, I've made over 200 videos. I'm going to keep going, folks. This is the, I'm still working on my Covenant series. That is still a working most in, 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 in play at the moment. I'm going to be putting more of those teachings out there. And I'm also going to be start producing a, a new series of videos looking in particular at volume 25 um, over the next few weeks because I really see powerful stuff in that volume. Um, and, you know, getting back into the swing of it now, I took a bit of a break over Christmas, which was necessary, but there's going to be a, a fresh impetus now that we're in 2024, the year of prayer, especially dedicated to the Our Father. That's a gift that Pope Francis has given to the church. You know, we have to recognize this, okay? The Pope has given us a year of prayer, 2024, began at Advent to the Feast of Christ the King or the Immaculate Conception, I can't remember which, and it's in preparation for the Great Jubilee of 2025. So you, this year is a year when the whole church will be particularly praying the Our Father. And don't forget, Jesus gave us the Our Father to prepare the church for the coming era of the Divine Will. So look at look at the providential stuff that's going on around yeah, they, us. You get my cogwheels going here, Derek. I want to <laughs> something on this good note as well, because I did read something about it says we were entrusting this year to our lady as well, our blessed mother. <clears throat> but um I need to double check on where that all's coming. If it's just a, a thing he said at one of his audiences recently, but he did say the year would be entrusted to our blessed mother as well with that prayer. Now, you combine an Our Lady, Our Blessed Mother, with uh, their Father and the, the Divine Will. We, we did mention it before we uh, started video, and it's something to pick up, because I did do a couple of videos with the recent unique request at Medjugorje on New Year's Day, where Our Lady herself requested Maria to get everyone, many people up the hill as possible for that apparition, but to pray for a good few hours before it came, the apparition occurred. And... Uh, Many of us tuned in in the Zoom. Most of us, I think, eventually got to Mary TV live stream. And uh, the word spread everywhere. We'd, my wife and I, we'd done a rosary. We joined in for a part. My father was the same. He watched most of it, if not all of it, and a few others did too. Now, what stood out for me, and people have come back from my videos, even private messaging, 
See the amount of people that have came to me and just say, you know, what was the gift that was promised? I mean, the message was clear. No one will regret this, not their children or their children's children. So what has she obtained for us through the Father? What is it? And I think it is just that gift of the assurance, the gift of whatever great merits for the family lineage in the future and whatever's to come, she's looking after us. But quite a number of people have got back and saying the gift is divine will. And I'm like, well, how are you getting that? But see, the more people I've known over the last 15 to 20 years of Medjugorje, they're all divine will, divine will. And I can see how easy it is from the beginning of just introducing myself to it. But it is that step in to the next. This is what the preparation's been all these years. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The era of peace. What could be bringing us more peace than loving God's will on earth? And people noted, my dad even said to me as well, did you not notice the torrential rain all day up that hill? It reminded me of Fatima at the miracle. They were drenched waiting for the sign. Well, here the people respond in Our Lady's call and whatever the gift may be and whatever. But pe people noticed that, see, for all the hours they were drenched in the rain. Mm -hmm. The last mm -hmm. decade of the rosary, that the rain stopped. And then you mm -hmm. see when in, there was no rain, just like that. <laughs> and then um, people noted apparently that when they're, they were praying, it was during their father, thy kingdom, and she goes back. You know, I think it was like thy kingdom come, thy will be done. But at the point, I think it was thy kingdom, and it's as if at that moment, our lady came. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's something you say, yeah, that's what it is, it's bringing in the kingdom, it's the kingdom. Here we go, Mark. This 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 is from the book of Deuteronomy. I thought it was great stuff, and it's like are these little hints though for that divine. Yeah, lots of little hints. This is from the book of Deuteronomy. Okay, the land you are to enter and possess, right, the kingdom, is not the land of Egypt, i.e., slavery, from which you have come, where you would sow your seed and then water it by hand as in a vegetable garden. No, the land into which you are crossing to take possession. Because Jesus wants you to take possession of this, is a land of mountains and valleys that drinks in rain from the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> you see, grace, grace is often compared like that rain from the heavens. And we can say, what was the gift? Because we didn't feel anything and we didn't see anything. God gives the greatest and the most powerful graces in darkness and silence. Now, I was saying to you earlier in the video, you cannot see the workings of your soul. We cannot see what God is doing. And in the Divine World Diaries, Jesus is revealing to us what's going on in the soul, what's going on within us. And here's a classic example. People watch the video and saying, well, what was a gift? But it's dark and hidden to you. What is the one thing you would really, really desire? What, what is the one thing heaven wants to see on earth right now? The kingdom. That is the greatest gift. That's the number one thing. And notice that Our Lady does this four weeks into the year of prayer, when we're meant to be praying the Our Father, and she stops the visionary right on that sentence. In the Our Father, right? She stops the visionary right on that sentence to say to us, pay attention. <laughs> this is the gift I'm giving. This is the gift I'm giving. Pay attention. And then the gift then, I mean, don't forget in Medjugorje, it was heavy rain. The rain, you're, the land you're coming into, drinks rain from the heavens. It's a land of mountains and valleys like Medjugorje. Um, it was dark. <laughs> The gift is given in darkness. The gifts of God are always given in the darkness of the soul where you cannot feel or see. And you'll find it in the Catechism. It's in Article 1997. Grace is darkness to the senses. And the word for grace in the Greek, charis, is the same word for gift. Yeah. So the gift of living in the divine will is the charis of living in the divine will, which is the charis that Our Lady wants to give us. At this moment, she wanted to offer to every soul, in my opinion, like yours, the gift of living in the divine will. And I just think, folks, praise yourself, because whereas up to now, you've probably felt that spreading this message is a bit like 
banging your head on a brick wall, you might well find there's going to be a lot of doors opening. And you, you, if you're a person who is particularly inclined towards busyness, now you have to be careful. Now you could become a workaholic. And Jesus does not want workaholics. He particularly wants people who work with him steadily, but who know how to take a rest one day a week. You know, so we, the, I think this is one of the reasons why Jesus has has allowed it to be difficult for us so that we work at a steady pace as we grow and spread this message. Amen. Brilliant stuff, Derek. You've been very upbeat with this one in particular. Not that you're not <laughs> any other time. I really sense there's something extra with you just now. It's some good stuff. I feel very uplifted. It's the fruit of having two weeks off, Mark. So I'm going to do this one and then take another two weeks off. <laughs> yeah, I felt very much to embrace Christmas this year away from the cameras, but of course I ended up with the man flu anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. I'm not 100%, as you probably hear, but I'm getting there. But it gives me some opportunity to maybe still do a little bit like this. But it was good getting away from cameras and social media and just... Mm -hmm. You know, the, the time goes on that I've went the other way over the hill from, the, you know, the social media and all this stuff. It's like, I want away from it. I want a little house in the middle of nowhere and just, that's it. <laughs> I want away yeah. from it now. Yeah, but you can also get a four, you can still get a 5G signal, mate. <laughs> uh, sure, sure. <laughs> but no, um, it was great just to get that sense of stillness, peace, being surrounded with the simplicity, but the beauty of family and and uh, your loved ones and that you know and and when you've got it through the eyes of god and faith and him being the reason for the season it was yeah. uh, it brings everything back to what's real and what's important you know i couldn't agree more i loved i loved christmas eve um you know my little boy doesn't like going to mass i think we think it's the crowds um and the strangers um, but the parish priest at the end of the Christmas Eve Mass um, let me take Holy Communion home to Masami. So the rest of the, my, my children went to the Mass at the Shrine. So we put the Mass on, on television. And so Sammy sat with us and we watched that Mass as well with him. And then when it came to Communion, I was able to give him Communion. And both my wife and I felt that that for us was one of the high points you know, the fact that all the family, all my children were at the Mass at the Shrine. My wife and I went to another vigil Mass, and then we had Mass with Sammy. And that for us was like a, a high a high moment, a beautiful grace moment in that silence and solitude and being with the Lord, being with family, being at peace. And just this is what the divine world is all about. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Eric, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Can't wait to have you back. Would you like to finish off with any final words based on what's Yeah, let's let's say a prayer. Let's say a prayer because there's a lot of people out there struggling, right? People wanting more. So I'm going to pray for those people. Mark, let's do this together as men of God. Yeah, if you put your hand up with I'm, when I'm putting my hand up, so we're, we're two stand together without 10,000 will flee. So we just pray over you. The watcher, we pray over you. May the Lord increase in your soul the gift of living in the divine will. May the Lord bring an end to despair, to depression, to hopelessness and sadness. May He bring an end to your carrying the wounds and the traumas of the past. And may the Lord bring you into this glorious land the kingdom of the divine will may he open up to you the treasures found in the writings of louisa may they become like a blazing light in your soul may he teach you to do your acts from dawn to dusk and may he give you a hunger and a thirst for his kingdom that surpasses every hunger and thirst in your life and I pray in the name of Jesus and through the intercession of Our Lady, I pray peace upon your soul in this holy year of 2024. 
preparation for the great jubilee of 2025. I pray peace, peace, peace in the name of Jesus Christ. May you have great peace of soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May as well keep this one open to receive as well. That was <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> Sorry, Beg. Thanks very much. Uh, all the best for the new year. I think it's going to be a very significant year indeed. And please, God, we're doing our part to reach as many people as possible. Um, that comes back to you, folks. Please, please, please share the videos as far as wide with your friends, family, your prayer groups on the WhatsApp groups, your social medias. Try and reach as many people as possible with the message of hope, of joy in this despairing world because it's not the way it's meant to be not by far as we've heard today again with Derek give the like and the thumbs up you know what you have to do in order to help promote it through the platform and don't forget heading over to Derek's channel from the Pustinia you're going to get a treasure of videos just waiting for you give him a little subscription and help him grow and do the exact same thing just share this isn't about personal promotions, finance, or anything else. How could we possibly do that in good conscience when we're trying to do God's work and do our part, responding to our ladies' calls as well? So please, your part is vital. I can't say it any more clearer than that. And until next time, take care and God bless.